Hey, good evening. So this is attempt number two. I got the first one in, and the whole dust collection piece was broke. The sawdust would have fell right down through, and somebody set it down too hard on the back side, and the dust port broke and pushed everything up through. So I got the new one. It's the same thing, of course, but when I got this on here, I had the same problems. This is loose. So if I use this, I could have variations as I push down through because it's loose. It's when I use it to always twist it in, push and pull. So what I'm doing is putting my fingers here, my thumb here, and I'm just pushing it that way. Well, that'll solve the problem because the error will be consistent that way. That one is tight. And you can adjust that right here. I can loosen that and maybe try to push it back a little bit. But tight's actually okay with me. You can make your own one of these. You have maybe four millimeters of depth. Probably just going to go with this one for now. If I have to have something that needs a true zero clearance, I'll make a sled to put on it. Cut it on the sled and then I don't have to worry about it. This, you have to be careful lining it up. It will let you line it up wrong. The worst thing about this saw is this. If I clamp it down and I push, it gives. And see that? That's locked and it still it moves around. On the original one that was broke, didn't have this problem. So we've got to adjust that somehow. So if we take this off, this bar goes against the back. And it's got this cover. So I've got to pop that cover off, and there is an adjustment screw in there, so let's take a look at it. Okay, so it's actually fairly easy to do this. I'm just going to pry it out. Works pretty good. Well, it's just plastic. It's more a cover than anything else. But as you can see, there is a nut there, and if I tighten that nut, I'll get a tighter hold. So I just want to tighten that. It feels very loose. So you gotta kinda play with this because I don't wanna go too far. Well, there I went too far. I'm gonna keep turning that out a half a turn until we get in the ballpark. Well, this is pretty tight, but this will move, so I wanna go just a little further. I'm going to go a quarter turn. How many times going to tell me if that's going to stay in place? If I have to constantly adjust it, I'm going to have to do something. So, this side is now tight before I could move this. I couldn't before. But what about this side? Is this, ah, much better. Look at that. Not moving. So once I clamp it on there, it's good. Every time I use it, I'll feel that when I put it on, and I'll know if it's coming loose. So, I gotta put a blade in. Okay, so I went to Harvest Freight and got a 10 inch, fine finish, 80 tooth, carbide tip, 5 8 arbor, 6,000 RPMs max. This saw should be in the 4,500 range. For use with electric or battery saws. So, works on both, no problem. Now, uh, part number on the saw blade is 57089. And they had this on sale at the same time I bought the saw for 20 bucks. I thought that was pretty good. So 10 inch miter saw and table saw blade, 80 tooth carbide teeth, ATV. Okay, so once the blade's in, the slot should be parallel to the blade, and the fence should be parallel to the blade. If they're not, then we've got to adjust things. Of course, when you want to do something with the blade, you've got to take this off in the center. There's a nut there, and you'll have two wrenches. Same size, convenient. I always put that nut back on until I want to put something back on it because otherwise I might lose it. You have to raise the mount all the way up. You raise the mount by turning this. Works good. And the thing to remember is the points point toward the front of the saw because the blade turns and goes down in the front. It cuts down, so it goes like this. So we have an arbor nut. Most of the time, that's going to be tight. This is the first time, so it's not. If it's tight and the motor turns with you, then slip this on the inside of the flange. And loosen it. So if you ever have any doubt about what way to turn, 
put the wrench down in there and pull toward the front of the saw and that'll loosen that. So here's the two flanges. They set together with the blade in the middle and that's what holds the blade from spinning. The outside one has an oblong instead of a circle hole in it. So you take the one that's got a circle hole, put it on, put your saw blade on, just slip it down in there. There you go. When I went to put that blade on, it only goes a little bit on. If I can just get this nut on, I can torque the nut down and hopefully force that on, but it's not the way you're supposed to do things. So two wrenches. Turn it if you have to. And turn this one, turn this wrench toward the back of the saw. So I'm actually press fitting the blade into that. I got past the lip, that went further on. So it's just the lip had like a little ridge on it that kept the blade from going on. I will say the first one of these I had had no problems mounting these blades. So you don't want to like over tighten this because you got to get it off. But there you go. Let's, well, we got that open. Let's pull this off. Okay, there's a little lever there. Pull that lever down and pull forward. See? Comes right off. Put the safety on or off. This doesn't change. The lever is on this. Now this actually mounts on the robbing knife. And the same thing. There's a little slot this fits in. Move the lever and it's locked. These of course are free moving up and down based on your workpiece. This pretty much fixed. Goes up and down with the blade. So you get it off of there. Pull that. There's two bolts in there. One little one down there, and one bigger one up here, and that's for these two slots. So you basically just push it on. It's a little rough to get on and off. There's a lever in there. It's the lever to lock the robbing plate. It locks this in place. And if I lift this up, there's two positions for this. And what I have to do is push this out, pull it up, lock it in place. Brings the arriving knife up. Designed this way to give you more protection. It brings these further up, and that is for when the saw blade is up more, give you more protection. But I can unlock it by pulling this lever, flex it out, pushing all the way back down in. There's two pins on this side of the arriving knife. And then you've got a down position and an up position. And you have to flex it to the side until you line up those pins, which is almost blind, by the way. Okay, now that I've got them in the right place, I can just push that down. That makes this steady. And then put this piece on so I could show you all the stuff I was doing in there. But you need to run it with this piece on. It's a pretty positive uh, fit. I actually need to adjust it to be less positive. Put this back on. It just kind of lays there. I lock it and everything's fine. Not showing well on the screen, but we'll see. This has a lock, so I undo the lock. And you see that automatically falls over. Turning the squeal is how I set the angle of the blade. Now, what you, first thing you need to do is set that to zero being zero. Don't trust the saw to do that. By the way, the saw's never been plugged in yet. So if I put it all the way over and lock this, that doesn't say zero. So I've got the blade all the way up. Let's see if it's 90 degrees. No, it's a little bit too far that way. I've got to find a way to hold it like this, and then I've got to tighten it with my other hand. Otherwise, I'll throw off the angle. Okay, it's kind of tricky. I hold the square up here, and I undo the lock, and I turn the wheel till it's at 90. Because there's enough play in all of this, if I don't hold it with this, while I tighten this, it slips just a tiny bit. So you're going to be real careful. You might do that several times before you actually get it right. And zero is not zero, by the way. I happen to have 
the screwdriver, I loosen the screw on the red indicator, and I'll move the red indicator. That is zero. Now, that being said, you know, it moved when I tightened it. That's zero. Thing is, you do that angle, never trust that scale. That scale is intended to give you a rough measurement. Even though I have that set on zero, if I move that and move it back, I will always go to the square. When they give you the scale here, they give you one with this piece attached and one without this piece attached. That's supposed to be a track that you can attach jigs to. So you can have different tools on here. Maybe some type of a tenon jig. So it gives you both, which if I have a jig on there, I'm not sure I care about the measurements. In general usage, I won't use this. I'll actually take it off. If I want to use this as a rip fence, I want to go against this. Matter of fact, it's not going to be long until I take three quarter inch plywood and make a fence about this tall on both sides and then plywood to spread between them to keep them at the same distance so they don't canter over one way or the other. I don't want to make this fence right now. Well, I want to make the fence right now. I'm not going to make the fence right now because sheets of three quarter inch plywood are absolutely skyrocketing. I think the last time I looked, the ones I want are around 85 to $100. Especially pre-COVID, they were in the $50 range. I'm gonna take this off. I left it on for this. I plan to take it off. The power core is pretty beefy. A tool like this, you actually want that. You wanna be able to get to the power, but you don't wanna lose any power along the way. You can usually read on the cords what they are. 14 American water gauge. A tool like this, if you had 12, that would be the best you'd ever see. I don't think you'd see anything less. I wanna go over some features of this. There's two interesting things about this side. Take the plastic nut off, so you got a washer. So you take the two wrenches, you put one here, put the washer on, put the second one. You wanna offset them. That'll hold those in place so they don't get lost. That's actually a good thing. Harbor Freight's been doing this a lot lately with their tools. This is the safety, and it mounts on the riving knife. In the same way that you mount it on the riving knife, you mount it into this. Hold it like this, push this in, and if it won't go, it's caught on that nut beneath it. So, it catches on this nut right there. And you move that lever just like you would on the riving knife, and it's there, it's solid. Okay, so what's interesting about the other side? Side, they give you a built-in place for your push stick. But this is meant to be like a job site saw, so you'd be lugging this everywhere. So having storage places is important. This is made to be stored here. Works pretty good. And here's your cord storage. So everything packs neatly away. What's interesting around back? I'll give you this, and you can put it here, and it stores. And it there's enough room there; it'll store with the bar on it. This is your dust collection, and it's an odd size. Uh, I think the smallest Chicago Electric dust collector has the same size. This it will fit right inside of it. I'm gonna have to make an adapter to fit the two and a half inch hoses that I have for dust collection. It has some anti-skid, anti-vibration feet. And they go pretty easy. Three plastic alignment pieces. So just align that, put it on. Okay, so let's watch it again. So I took off the tool fence. If you want to know what type of bolts to buy for this side, you can take this off. It looks like a quarter 20 carriage bolt, so it should be fairly easy to find. I'm tightening these up because I don't want to lose them. You only need this if you're attaching a jig to the fence. So I'll put it in its storage location. I'm going to put the fence on. When I cut this, I just want to cut off these two extended pieces. I'm going to cut it right behind it to make a smooth cut. I'm going to measure that. I do this on my big saw too. I make sure to measure here to make sure my distance is right. And I make adjustments if I need to. It's really hard to do this and get back of the tooth. I had a smaller uh, caliper. So there's the front. 
So it's about the same. If there is any play in that, I'm not seeing it. The difference between the two is in the hundredths of a millimeter. So I consider that pretty good for this saw. So let me turn the saw blade up. Just over what I need to cut this board. It's actually, I went maybe a quarter inch over. So I can cut this now. I want to use their push stick. I'll use it for the front since it's longer. I'll use my push stick for the back. And my goal is just to keep it, uh, keep it stable. So let's see how loud it is. Lots of dust, just what you would expect. So I had some problems with it chattering. So how does this look? You can see where it hit that chatter. And that was more me not holding it down, I think. Let's try another cut. One thing I liked is when I pressed against that, it didn't move. Okay, that was a lot better cut. And I noticed that when I stalled it, it's when I got that chatter. You can see the mark right here. So it's pushing too hard. And that's the two times it chattered the first time. So that is stalling the motor. The dust collection worked great on the back end, but it doesn't suck all the sawdust in here. You can see all that was here. So I should have wore a mat. That's 31, 31, 31, so three places, all 31. Actually a very good cut, although I can see a little variation. It almost looks, uh, it almost looks cosmetic, but I can feel it just barely. So let's go here, 31, 31. Now, so I'm pretty happy with the cut. Uh, with the 15 amp motor, I didn't expect to be able to slow the blade down. In my opinion, I wasn't putting too much feed pressure in. The saw most certainly thought I was. When I got it to stall, I can see a visual imperfection here. And on this side, I can see these two swirls. And you can actually feel them. That saw actually slowed down, which made it jitter. My feeding it too fast just made that worse. So I think if you take your time with feeding it, you'll be okay. Okay, I had dust collection on and the top of the saw was terrible. There's a lot of dust here. I'll be feeling that in my lungs for a couple days because I didn't put on a mask. So what do I think of the saw? I think for a general use saw, it would be great. A lot of the projects I do are shop projects. Uh, just fine on the saw. You say I want to make a box. If I take my time and watch the setup on this, I think it would do just fine. I didn't have any expectations of super accuracy, but this actually surprised me. Okay, so if you like the videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.